Cat fashion, photons, and load balancers. How do they all relate? Stay tuned to learn more. For many people, one of the greatest mysteries in the universe is how in the world Google can return billions of cat image results in under one second. So I brought my friend Yuri here to help explain just how we do that. While the internet has a whole set of optimizations to make things like these searches fast, Google's global architecture has its own secret sauce that allows it to achieve the speed and accuracy that you've come to know, which prompts many customers and companies to ask how to leverage that performance for their own needs. Well, Google spent the last two decades building one of the largest, fastest fiber optic networks in the world to support Google Cloud and Google's own services, you know, like YouTube and Gmail. And that network has grown 15 times in the past six years, passing 600 trillion bits per second across land and through sea, allowing us to service over 1 billion users a day. In building this network, Google has had to put in years of research some of which has made it back into the community as white papers, which talk about more of the amazing achievements in technology. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. To understand how big this technology is, let's start by getting small and looking at how the internet works from the perspective of a single photon running through Google's network. Let's say we just created our latest web e-commerce site on Google Cloud that serves the latest cat fashion trends. We have some users in Singapore who are testing our new site and send a request from their device to purchase cat winter apparel. The request from the user's device will hit the service provider first, which will realize the destination is a Google server. It will send it right to the closest Google front-end server that it can find. These GFEs sit at the very edge of Google's global network, where multiple points of presence lie to allow information to be served as close to the users as possible, like Rio de Janeiro, Zurich, and Singapore. At this point, Google's technological magic takes over. The first thing their request does is slam into Google Cloud's software-defined global load balancer. This load balancer is responsible for distributing HTTP and HTTPS traffic to backends in order to manage and distribute load in a scalable way. In the best scenario, we've deployed our software onto VMs running in the Singapore data center, in which case the request is handled and the data is sent back to the user. But let's say the closest backend instance group in Singapore is unavailable. Or maybe we haven't deployed VMs to this region yet. The user's request is seamlessly directed to other VMs we are running stationed in the US East region. What is great about the global L7 load balancer is that a routing to a different region across the globe happens without the developer having to lift a finger. And configuration is just a few clicks in the UI. It gives you a single AnyCAS IP that you can point traffic to even if the backends go down. What lets the L7 load balancer do this is the fact that all of the load balancing is done in software rather than in hardware. It performs a weighted selection from the set of backends, skipping any backends that appear unhealthy or whose connections are saturated. This is called the waterfall by region algorithm. And we'll have an in-depth episode on this on our other series, Get Cooking in Cloud. Traffic is proxied through these GFEs, which forwards the query to the selected backend running our cat web server. Now, in our scenario of a user in Singapore requesting data from a VM in US East, the GFE sent the request across a subsea fiber optical cable from APAC to the US, which connects various operational regions of Google Cloud. These fiber networks connect cloud regions across land over thousands of kilometers. You've probably passed them and never even noticed they are underground, along railroad tracks, across land on poles, or even across mountain ranges. And if you're wondering about the speed, photons travel at two thirds of the speed in light in fiber. And with that speed, our photons can carry over 2 million photos and 8,000 YouTube videos every second across our network. Bear with me on what happens next. That AnyCast IP the L7 load balancer has comes with an associated forwarding rule, which will then direct traffic to a target proxy. Here, the target proxy terminates the client session. It has configurations for a URL map like host and path rules, which then routes the traffic to the correct backend service on VMs in the US East region. The backend service checks each backend's capacity and health and sends traffic to the most available and healthy backend. It then serves the shopping data back. The GFE caches the response and forwards it to the user. And this, my friends, is how you can optimize for latency by choosing from Google Cloud's globally extensive regions that are closest to your users, even when backends are overloaded or unhealthy. Or you can use Google Cloud's content delivery network to leverage our load balancing and cache content closer to your users. But let's go back for a second. 
we would be remiss if we didn't discuss in a bit more detail what happens as the content is sent back to the user from the backends. As the response is served back to the GFE from the VM, photons are sent from our servers, which are connected to optical transmission equipment. This uses infrared lasers to transmit signals through the fiber network. A typical cable would have hundreds of optical fibers, each made of a glass with a diameter of just a human hair, and they can transmit signals with terabits capacity. Then the photons leave the Google data center through fibers that are bundled in an outside plant cable. But we inevitably face a problem. As photons travel down fiber optic cables, their intensity diminishes, called attenuation. For example, in one of Google's research papers, they demonstrated what happens when optical signals travel through 3,200 kilometers. Looking at the graph, you can see that the relative power level of the signal decreased. So how do photons make it all the way between regions, which are thousands of kilometers apart? To combat attenuation, we place optical amplifiers along our cables with hundreds of them on the route. Amplifiers increase the signal over long distances so our photon can make it to its destination. The journey of the photon finally ends back in Singapore. It traveled along fiber laid underground and strung through the air, getting amplified along the way, all of which happened in just milliseconds. Our fiber networks now connect Google Cloud regions across five continents. Over the past 10 years, through a combination of buying and leasing, Google has fiber all around the world. But this is only the beginning. There's so much more in development to support our future cloud regions. In fact, you can automatically take advantage of this by using the premium tier network to access Google's own global private network, avoiding suboptimal internet path. Check out the link below to learn more. Like this video if you want more content like this. And remember, optimizing your network means freeing up your bandwidth. <laughs>